What's up guys, JC Sends coming at you from Micro Center here in Tustin, California, one of our favorite stores for obvious reasons. Um, we're gonna be shooting a video here today where I'm gonna be picking parts to see what the absolute cheapest, realistic gaming PC is that I can build, uh, obviously utilizing Micro Center's amazing uh, in-store pricing. So let's see what parts we can find, let's see what's in stock, mostly, and then let's build it and see what we can actually get for our money here. Sonic is proud to announce their all-new Elite XG32OU gaming monitor. The XG32OU features a 4K 32-inch display with a 1 millisecond response time and 150Hz refresh rate and builds upon ViewSonic's revered Elite panel lineup. The ViewSonic Elite series monitors feature clean aesthetic design that blend well with any setup, whether it be professional or personal, due to their sleek design and tasteful lighting. To learn more about ViewSonic's gaming monitors or to see their full lineup of monitors, click the link in the description below. All right, so the order of events I like to pick my parts is going to be um, CPU, motherboard, and GPU first because that determines what size power supply we need. And since we're going on the premise here being as cheap as possible, we need to determine what the platform is going to be. So we've got an Intel 11600K for $189, or we've got the AMD 5600G for $199, and then we've got 5600Xs for 249. 209, 199, 189. So if we go to the AMD motherboards over here, I can get the B550 for 179. I can get the B550 Tough for 169. I can get the B550M Prime for 129, which is literally a no frills, nothing special about it motherboard. So we could go Intel. This is a tough one. I've not personally used that 11600K, but I do know 11th gen is awesome when it comes to its IPC. I think we're gonna go ahead and do the 11600K, um, mostly because we haven't done a build with this yet. It's $10 cheaper than if we did the 5600G. We're not using integrated graphics, so I don't necessarily want a 5600G. I'd rather do 5600X. That ends up being um, $10 more than, no. $20 more than this one. So there's 20 bucks saved here. We can actually get a nice cooler for this. I say nice, but get a cooler for it. It's a, just a CPU, there's no box cooler, so we need to get a cooler. So now that we know that we're not using extremely high power consumption parts, 11600K, um, H570, we're not gonna be overclocking it. Uh, let's find a cooler first, and then we'll talk GPU. So I would love to use a Cooler Master Hyper 212 Evo V2 in here, but it's 45 bucks right now. This is, the Hyper 212 is frustrating. It's extremely popular, but I've never seen a cooler with a more volatile price than the Hyper 212. Sometimes it's 25 bucks, sometimes it's 50 bucks. Like they never make up their mind what it costs to make apparently. So we're gonna go ahead and go with the Deep Cool Gamax 400 V2, a very similar style cooler, a 120 millimeter fan. It's 30 bucks. Um, I feel like the days of like $20 coolers are gone, but this is, this is what we got and this is what we're gonna use. This saves us 20 bucks to put somewhere else. So that's the cooler. Okay, graphics card. This is the hard one, right? Right. Well, we chose the RX 6600 non-XT because of the price, and we're shooting for 1080p gaming here. And let's face it, there's clearly plenty of AMD cards in stock at the Micro Center Dustin store. Everything from 6500s all the way up to 6900 XTs. Uh, but this is a $429 card. Obviously, this is higher than MSRP, but I mean, it's the world we live in right now. 429, I was gonna get the XT initially. Um, the thing is, this saves me 70 bucks. But before we leave, we have to look and see what the NVIDIA inventory looks like, so let's see. Now, when it comes to NVIDIA cards, there's not as many in stock, but there's clearly cards in stock. I see 3050s, 3060s, 3060 Ti's, 3080s. It's even a 3080 right there, 3080 Ti's. I just wanna double check that there's nothing I would rather use. Oh, see, a 1660 Super 389. Jeez, that's quite a bit cheaper than the 6600. Let me look up my chart real quick. The 6600 is faster. I can get one for 359, so now we're talking 40 plus 30, so $70 difference. So I think I'm gonna switch to the 1660 Super at the 359, simply because of the fact that we saved 70 bucks that way. Your opinion may vary, and that's perfectly fine. You can see now, in this price range, 6600, 1660 Super, or the 3050. Pick your flavor. All right, power supply time. 1250 watts should be good for this. Um, no, I'm just kidding. So this is where the wattage that you choose becomes kind of how future ready do you want to be, right? If you want to go with bigger components and you spec your power supply specifically to what is going to work with this graphics card and these components, 
then if you upgrade later, you might need to buy a bigger power supply as well. So I'm thinking somewhere around a 650 or 700 watt would put us one in a very good part of the efficiency curve and two, give us enough future compatibility um, to where we're not gonna feel like we have to upgrade our power supply in the future. The Solid Gear Basics 600 watt for $25. It has a fan. No, it has a fan quiet and a cooling fan. Um, we also have the Power Spec power supplies. These are the in-house brands. Um, this is Micro Center's own brand. So the Power Spec 650 watt, $65, no RGB fan or anything on there, no lip fan. Um, on sale for 50 bucks as well. I think I'm gonna switch to this one instead of the G-Skill for two reasons. One, it's got a five-year warranty. But two, it actually has sleeve on the cables. Although it's that ugly sleeve that covers the entire harness, this one, as you can see right here, doesn't have anything, if this picture is correct. They're both 80 plus bronze. They're both 650 watt. Micro Center is local to us. If we have a problem with this power supply, we can come here and switch it out in person. All right, so we're gonna be going with a 512 gigabyte, um, $50 NVMe SSD, which is again, Inland brand. Um, it's 3D TLC NAND, it's PCIe Gen 3 by four, which is fine. It gives us up to 2000 megabytes per second read, right? A read, 1500 megabytes write, which is fine because storage, this is an area where you guys have to decide how much you're willing to spend. 512 would be enough to install our OS and then several games depending on the size of the game. Big games today are about 100 gigabytes. Um, average games are probably around 60. So you do the math on that, how often you'll be switching out your games, but you can expand storage easily later on. This gets us up and running for only 50 bucks, NVMe speed, and the fact that we uh, aren't gonna be spending an arm and a leg. It's kind of fortunate that we're building a previous gen without DDR5, because the pricing of DDR5 is so high. I was able to get a 16 gigabyte kit, so two eight gig sticks of DDR4 3000, uh, I don't even know what the timings are on this. Oh, 15, 16, 16, 35, pretty standard, um, for 59 bucks. So there are, some, there are some sets that are a little cheaper at like $55, $56, um, but they're from like Neo Forza. I've never heard of that brand. If you guys have used it, comment down below what your experience has been. I'd rather spend the four extra bucks and go with a brand I know um, and feel comfortable with the RAM. All we have left to do now is a case. And then while I'm here, I'm gonna be checking out things like the pedals and the flight sticks and all that stuff because you know how hard it's been for the longest time to buy flight sticks and pedals and whatnot, but sim racing and sim flying has gotten so popular now. Micro Center carries a complete like lineup of SIM products, including chairs and wheels and all that. That makes me happy. All right, so cases are interesting. Um, even the cheapest cases are more expensive than the RAM. Cases are expensive right now. So we're gonna take a chance here on Montech with good value. Don't get the non-good value one. That one costs more. Um, I actually thought this was a Corsair case at first glance because they totally ripped off the Corsair font. As you can see, that is a thousand percent the Corsair font. I thought this was a Corsair case, but it's gonna give us plenty of airflow um, with the four fans, with the mesh front, of course, and it will fit our stuff, and it costs $89. There's a day where I would have been like, dude, 89 bucks is super cheap for a case, but that's not the case when you're building something as cheap as you can build it. I mean, most cases here were like 150, 130. I feel like the $39, $49 basic steel box days are long gone. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a recap of all the parts that we're using here. Here's the Air 1000 by Montech with good value. We are using the Intel Core i5 11600K, which is of course an unlocked CPU on a locked motherboard. We are gonna be using the Asus Prime H570 Plus, um, which is an ATX motherboard, pairing that with 16 gigabytes of Crucial Ballistics gaming memory, 16 gigabyte kit, 3000 megahertz, um, CL16 timings, right? 16, no, 15. 512 gigabyte SSD. Um, it says 79 on there. It's actually on sale right now for 49. So $50 SSD, PCIe Gen 3, but that's fine. Um, our cooler is the $29.99 Gammax 400 V2 from Deepcool. Power supply, our power spec 650 watt non-modular um, power supply. And I believe the price on this was 59, I think on sale or 55, I don't remember. Yeah, we'll all be tallying for you guys because Phil does that. And then we've got our 1660 Super right here, um, which was 
I don't remember if that was the actual price. I think it might be 359. Yes, 359. So our 1660 Super targeting 1080p gaming. Actually, we found better with good value of Montec. With gooder value. With gooder value. This is $69 and it actually has one, two, three 140 millimeter front fans and one, two, three 120 millimeter ARGB exhaust fans for a total of six fans. For cheaper. For cheaper. It's a, it's a weird shape. It's squished, but tall. So you're not gonna have a lot of space between your motherboard and your front fan. So if you wanna end up running a long graphics card or something, this could limit that. But I think what you get for the price, I think this is the one we're gonna go with, even though they completely ripped off the, the Meshify front of a fractal case, which is actually right here. <laughs> it's like, hmm. It's like more geometric. <laughs> fractal work. So, so they stole Corsair's font and they stole Fractal's front. They're just stealing all the F words. <laughs> All right, so now that we found the X3 case that comes with the four fans, which is definitely gonna be a better deal, definitely with a good value. Um, now we can add all this up and see how much it costs. And it costs exactly $996.60, and that includes tax. So we actually ended up doing, I wasn't trying for a sub 1,000, it's just that's about the cheapest you can build a computer for these days, as you can see. There are areas we could have saved money, like I said, we could have gone 1650, or we could have gone something even lower. Um, that's why I said the, cheapest reasonable gaming PC. So 1080p was our target, mid to high settings. Our 1660 uh, Super will do that. We have some upgradability built into this, like the 11600K, right? That is overclockable. Um, the board, maybe not necessarily, but um, you know, there, there is longevity to these parts. These are not like parts that are old and obsolete and being sold off super cheap. This is stuff that would actually last you for a while. So you could upgrade the graphics card if you wanted to, to something higher end. The CPU is not gonna bottleneck it. There is enough wattage built into the power supply where we could go up as high as something like a 3060 or a 3070 and not feel like we're starting to put too much strain on our power supply. The case has four fans in it, although it's just a basic box. It's got plenty of cooling, so we put in higher end parts, it's gonna be able to keep that cool. So what we gotta do next is we gotta pay for this. Well, Micro Center's gonna pay for it because you know, they're sponsoring this video, but they're gonna pay for it. And then we're gonna take it back to the studio and we're gonna build it and we're gonna see exactly how it looks and performs once it's all assembled. So we're back at the studio now and the video quality is so much better. Um, air conditioners and fans are going. It's a warm day today in Southern California. I wanna start before we go on to the film montage, an epic montage of just a regular old thousand dollar build. You know the sad part about this current state of affairs of pricing is this is the kind of build back in the day we feel like we could have done for like five or 600. Um, I just wanna do an unboxing of this case. Cause again, this is a brand I've never heard of. It comes with more value, which is always a plus. And I wanna see like what the unboxing experience is like. So, cardboard, crappy foam and plastic, which means I'm gonna get shocked probably. It's so light. Like, what you can't tell in the video is like, you know there's that old adage like, weight equals quality. <laughs> this thing is freakishly light. So like, I don't know how to explain it. I mean, even with the tempered glass side panel, it's, oh it's so like, <laughs> Whatever. But I mean, again, who knows how good the fans are? Even crap fans are good while they're running, you know, I guess. So we got three 140 intakes, two 120 exhausts on the top and one on the rear. Um, and then what does the backside look like? Because the amount of space back here for wiring is important, especially considering we have a non-modular power supply with this build. Oh, and if we look at the top row, interesting placement for the pieces. They're along here and not along here. But we got a power button. Uh, those are LEDs, I assume. Separate mic and headphone jack. Two USB, and this 3.0? Just says USB, oh, those are 2.0. We got a reset button. We have an LED button, again, because of the lights, and one USB 3.0. Two, two and a half inch drive base. And the mother of all daisy chains <laughs> of ATX <laughs> power. Dude. <laughs> All right, let's build a computer.
So apparently I accidentally themed this build. The motherboard has silver, um, like bare aluminum covers and stuff on everything, heat sinks and whatnot, and so the deep cool matches. The graphics card is also a silver PCB on there, which matches. The crazy silver lines on the back match the silver slash white lines on the motherboard. And the short graphics card fits the perfect portrait mode of this build without even trying. So it doesn't look that odd. The worst part is this window showing off the ugly power supply, which I was gonna flip in there upside down, pulling air through this hole to trigger you guys too, because anytime you install a power supply upside down, people get all mad. But this case only allows the whole orientation for the power supply facing with the fan down. So that's unfortunate. Um, but I'm gonna give you a quick word of warning with this case. It is flimsy AF. Like the amount of flex when you start pushing on things is crazy. Like that, <laughs> the, the back motherboard tray, like the wall is, is insane. Um, the IO covers, they're the old school tabs that you break off. Who remembers those? Like way back in the day, you break them off. Um, you could buy generic ones if you ever needed to recover. Like if you get another motherboard that pushes a graphics card down one slot, you'll break off another one. They have an exposed one on the top. You can get generic ones that just would replace it, but I just wanted to point that out. Um, the front panel literally just pulls off so you can get to the uh, filter to clean it. So there's not actually a fan filter either, by the way, this is just the mesh material. You know what though, all in all, this is a case we feel like would have been a solid 30 bucks or 40 bucks back in the day. But the fact that we do get six fans, as long as they turn and move air, I mean, budget build, right? Okay, first boot. Does it boot? Well, Phil, I figured out how they're RGB. <laughs> they light up RGB, but they don't move. You gotta like, there you no, go. that's just an on and off. Wait, really? <laughs> so that's, there was a star. Hey, look, post. Okay, so that was the star on RGB. We were like, what does RGB star six mean? I thought I meant time six, no. We were trying to figure out on that Molex stack, like how was it getting ARGB? Like how is this working? It's sending power to the RGB LEDs, but that's because there is literally a green LED next to a blue LED, next to a red LED. So it's naturally rainbowing just because of the light bleed of the LED next to it. That's literally how this is working if you look at it closely. So it's colorful, but not adjustable in any way whatsoever. And then our deep cool fan is just blue because that's just a powered LED fan. It's just a blue fan. But you know what though? At the end of the day, it doesn't look terrible. And there's actually a fairly good amount of airflow going through this chassis. So I have no doubt this will have no problems cooling the level of hardware that we put in here. All right, our OS is installed and updated. We'll start with a Cinebench R23 here. No overclocked or anything. Oh, you know what I haven't done though? Uh, BIOS and XMP. I have no problems enabling XMP on DDR4. DDR5, on the other hand, it's hit or miss, depending on your motherboard's BIOS. All right, so now that we've rebooted 17 Molex plugs, that's what we named the system, 17 Molex plugs. Let's see what kind of a Cinebench score that we get. I'm gonna estimate somewhere between 16,000 and 17,000. Zoom in my guess. I've not actually run this. I've never run an 11600 in a build. So this is my first, I'm just basing it off the tier of where it should land. Oh, and also too, um, I think I mentioned at Micro Center that the 5600X slash G had more cores than this. It doesn't, they're both six core, 12 thread CPUs. So the 11th gen 11600K for gaming with its um, higher core clocks and slightly slower or lower IPC, this would actually be a better system for gaming uh, because of the higher core clocks. 71C on the CPU, I mean, that's not bad. All right, how far off is my score? It's uh, 11,108 points, so okay, fine. I, I guess I was off a little bit. <laughs> Temperature though, look, look at that, in the 70 and 71, perfectly fine. Stop, okay, there's no overclocking on this. I, there's no power limit, 100% is all we get. But uh, we're gonna do 3D Mark Time Spy, regular Time Spy, which is um, actually a 1440p test. And we're gonna do just a regular Fire Strike, which is actually a 1080p test. What gives, man? A 6,317, it only gives me a good, and it gives you a great with a score of 935 with your little, little box. 
I think it's because it knew that was a laptop, so it compared it to like other <laughs> Iris graphics type stuff, right? The or sliding scale of, of words. I think it kind of is. Anyway, 6,317 CPU score, 9252, 5983. Um, estimated gaming graphics or performance. Battlefield 5, 60 plus in 1440, 1080, 80 plus. Apex Legends, 105 plus. GTA 5, 60 plus. Fortnite, should be like 8,000 plus. Red Dead Redemption 2, less than 30. Yeah. <laughs> That's about right. But okay, so let's go ahead and do now regular Fire Strike, which is a 1080p test. And let's see how that runs. Dude, this is so nuts. When you think about like, okay, so Fire Strike is a, is a 3D Mark test that I used way back in the day. When I first started the channel, it was already out. I was FX 8320 or 8120 actually with a 680 GPU. Dude, I was so excited when I broke 10,000 on this test with a graphics score. Well, the 1660 Super is a 16,290. So I can remember breaking 10,000 with my 680 and being super excited when it was water cooled and overclocked and all that stuff. Do you know how much more horsepower you need to gain 6,000 points in Fire Strike? I wasn't even getting 16,000 when I was running SLI 680s. So physics score, 23,018. I was getting like a 9,000 or an 8,000 or something like that with the FX CPU. So that shows you just how far things have come. We're better than 68% of all results. So we landed in the top half with this this hardware. <laughs> so I know it seems like I'm uber excited for something so trivial in terms of like, this is fairly lower end hardware. I mean, the 11600K is by far the highest tier item in this build, but uh, I'm happy with that. One last test we got to do. Oh, and what would, our, what would our max temperature get? Let's see. Max CPU temp got to 72. That's when we were doing Cinebench. And our max GPU temperature, it says it got to 99C on the GPU. Oh, that's usage, Never mind. <laughs> 61, I was like, how? 61, okay, that's about right there for that hardware. six fans in the case, it should never <laughs> get that hot. That would mean something's physically wrong with the card. <laughs> and it should have shut down before that. All right, one last thing we gotta do. We gotta play some Rocket League. So CPU specs are along the top. GPU specs are along the middle. Um, the temperature, I love the low watt parts, man. They look core clock right there. I'm not gonna be scoring or anything, I don't think. This is gonna be a bunch of ball chasers because we are in casual. They're already what a saving. Okay, well. Oh, what a save. <laughs> oh no, okay. No. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> <laughs> it feels so weird in 1080 because everything's so ed, like aliased. The only thing I feel like this, I don't like about this right now is the fact that I'm at 1080p. <laughs> in 24 inches. I'm not used to such small panels. Oh God. Okay, whatever. <laughs> ah, oh. oh, you bumped it out of the way. That's Jesus, cool. there it is. that was a super fast shot. You guys, they can't see it under the under the stats, but you guys are <laughs> dominating. Yeah, we're 4-1 four, uh, four right now. Usually party people. Oh, <laughs> okay, well, the ultimate sign of success. That's a good gaming computer. It makes people forfeit because it's so powerful. But no, actually, it's a, it's pretty awesome. So I, I when Micro Center was like, hey Jay, we want to uh, never mind the Rocket Pass thing. I mean, I'm not actually a member of Rocket. I don't have Rocket Pass. It's fine. <laughs> so when Micro Center was like, hey Jay, we want you to you know come in and make a video. What kind of suggestions do you have? I said, well, you know, we've done a lot of high end stuff. Why don't we see what the most realistic entry level type computer we could build is for the best budget possible? We probably could have built this system for more or less 500 to $600 if we'd gone with the 5600G and then just hope that graphics card prices continue to fall and then add one later, which would be, if you can't afford a GPU right now, realistically, I would have gotten the, the same parts I mentioned earlier if I were gonna do AMD, I would have got a 5600G with the uh, motherboard that has obviously the integrated HDMI and DVI and all, uh, all that. And, or not DVI, but DisplayPort. And the same RAM, same storage and all that, played on internal graphics, which is Vega. And then as soon as you could afford the graphics card, throw that in later. So that would be the cheaper alternative. If you couldn't afford $1,000 now, that would be the, the best route. Anyway, the links to all these parts are down below. Again, huge thanks. Uh, thank you to Micro Center for sponsoring today's video. And uh, you know what? It performs actually better and looks better than I truly expected it to be. Of all the budget builds we've done, and I hate, I hate using the term budget with $1,000 because it's just the state of affairs today. It looks good on top of it all. Normally it's super ugly ketchup and mustard and whatnot, but black cables and heck, even the non-moving RGB fans don't look terrible. 
All right, guys, thanks for watching. And as always, we'll see you in the next one. I'm gonna go back on my big screen and I'm gonna do some, some more placements.